Joining me, Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. Welcome. You've been all over this story. We do have a lot to ask you about. But before I get to the developments in your state of Michigan, I do want you to weigh in on the Supreme Court's decision declining to fast track Trump's immunity claim. Is this a win for Trump or might the appellate court move swiftly if it's possible? Well, I think that's really first. Thanks for having me. I think that's really going to unfold in the weeks ahead. I, I think in, in all cases, as, and I say this as a former dean of a law school and constitutional law scholar, uh, we want the court to be by the book and, and also move judiciously. We still see that happening with the hearing coming next month, at the D.C. Circuit. And uh, my hope is that the Supreme Court on all things will recognize the urgency of clarity on all these fronts. And once and as the proper procedures are followed, uh, we'll issue decisions providing that clarity. Okay, let's get back to the news out of your state. Uh, you said in November of 2020 that you were aware of multiple attempts by Trump and his allies to undermine the will of the voters and that he was in fact trying to pressure local officials, local officials rather to subvert their duty. Were you aware of this phone call involving Trump, Ronna McDaniel and those two canvassers? And how could election board members choose not to certify votes? How would that happen? Well, the we were aware of the pressure. And in fact, Monica Palmer, as you showed, really talked about it publicly. So that was no surprise. The content of this recording was of no surprise. What was challenging in that moment was that there was both a legal duty for the canvassers to certify. There was no evidence of, of any type of malfeasance or wrongdoing presented to them. They had a ministerial responsibility under the law to certify at the local level and the state level. Everyone knew that, and we knew if they didn't vote to certify, it's a four-person board, two of the canvassers, if they voted not to certify, it would have gone to the Michigan Supreme Court, which would have compelled them to certify, uh, and uh, then we would have seen the state certification similarly go forward. It was all an issue of delay, uh, which we see playing out here uh, even now in this in this current issue with the Supreme Court and the Trump campaign. Uh, the issue of trying to delay and creating that delay gives this sense of uncertainty and allows this misinformation campaign to take hold and then be used to influence certification in other states. You, Trump tweeted the night of the Wayne County Board of Canvassers meeting, oh, looks like Michigan's, Michigan's not going to certify. There must be something wrong. We knew the longer that it took for a court to weigh in and compel certification, the more space he would have to spread that misinformation. And that could upend the entire certification process in all of the battleground states. Understandably so. But I'm curious if you're surprised that a recording apparently exists of this conversation and why might it be surfacing now? You know, my first reaction when this story broke was who had this recording for three years and sat on it <laughs> and why? Uh, and so, you know, that's, I think, an open question. And there's lots of speculation about that. Obviously, the fact that it comes out right after the Colorado Supreme Court ruling on the 14th Amendment question. Uh, is 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 questionable and notable. I don't know the source of the recording. I don't know uh, why they might have waited until now or what the agenda is. But those are the questions we also need to be asking as uh, this component of the story unfolds. I'm curious, though, your thoughts on Trump personally reaching out to those Wayne County board members, putting the full pressure of the presidency on them. Do you expect a criminal investigation to be opened into Trump? Because on the face of it, is that a criminal act? And can you, as Secretary of State, push to pursue it as such? I mean, how would that look? Are you already considering some kind of action? I have had conversations about that. I mean, the, the re reality is there are several criminal inquiries happening at the state and federal level into the post-election attempts to both pressure local officials, state lawmakers, and others to interfere with the process, all the way up to the tragedy of our capital on US, uh, the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. So one is a question of, is is there actual evidence? It's notable this, this uh, article talks about the recording, but no one has heard it yet. No one knows where it exists or who has it. So that's an open question. But then will the existing criminal investigations capture any additional illegalities that are revealed through this reporting? Uh, uh, that's possible. I don't know if a separate inquiry needs to be open, given the ongoing criminal investigations. Uh, all of that is in the is in the purview of prosecutors at the state and federal level to decide. And we will continue cooperating with all of them uh, as we work to, to tell our story and serve as witnesses to what we experienced in November 2020.
And then there's RNC chair Ronna McDaniel. I'm curious your thoughts on her, a fellow Michigander, uh, essentially playing the role of accomplice, saying the RNC would provide those canvassers with legal representation to break election laws. Was this a surprise to you? Do you think she may be investigated for potential crimes? I think it's possible. We know under Michigan law, if you offer someone something of value in order to compel them to not fulfill their legal duty, that constitutes bribery. So will that ca be captured in existing criminal proceedings? We'll see. And, you know, Ms. McDaniel was no stranger to these conspiracy claims. She held a press conference a few weeks earlier with a number of lies about our elections in Michigan. So, again, it was no surprise to me uh, to, to hear of her involvement. Uh, but what it does also underscore is how high, and these are national figures, the president of the United States, just how high this went uh, in this effort to pressure local election officials to not do their duty of certifying the election results in, in Wayne County, which included Detroit. Uh, and so that's a lot when a president calls someone who is you yeah. know, simply just trying to, to, to do their local duty. Uh, and it's it's notable that at the end of the day, they did vote to certify and the state county, the state board of canvassers did certify election. We prevailed. Democracy prevailed. And the attempts of the Trump campaign were unsuccessful. Hmm. Extraordinary pressure, in fact. Uh, let me ask you finally this last question, because, as you know, there's that lawsuit in Michigan to remove Trump from the ballot, similar to the one that has prevailed in Colorado, uh, the Michigan one now being appealed to the Michigan Supreme Court. Does your office have a position on that lawsuit? Our position is that it's up to the courts. I think this is not a cut and dried issue. It is it is it is a serious one. The allegations are serious and it has serious implications both in this case and in creating a legal precedent that could be applied in other cases as well. So the justices on our Michigan Supreme Court and ultimately the U.S. Supreme Court need to take this seriously and they need to provide us clarity, which is really, frankly, our only position at this point. We just want to know who we need to put on the ballot in Michigan, uh, as in Colorado, frankly, the former president is on the primary ballot until a court rules otherwise, in our case, the U.S. Supreme Court. And so we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but that clarity for voters, for the Republican Party, for election officials is really needed sooner rather than later so that we can have some finality in this question and move forward with the 2024 election. Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, um, thank you for your vigilance and for always staying on it. I hope you get a bit of a break during the holidays, but not too long because buckle up for 2024. Thank you. Indeed.